Weirdo Benjo. I play a lot of video games, and most nights it's multiplayer games with friends. More often than not, it is Hunt Showdown. Do you know how easy it is to get into a multiplayer game on Steam, Xbox, or PlayStation? Yeah, it's that easy. Just that easy. If only it was like that with the Quest. The Quest 2 has a huge problem. A problem that's existed since day one. A problem that has the power to leave such a bad first impression that VR newcomers don't want to stick around. And a problem that when paired with the general discomfort of wearing a VR headset for extended periods of time and being unaware of your in real life surroundings is a deadly nail in the coffin of this medium's growth. There is still far too much friction in the Quest 2's social and multiplayer systems. And it frustrates me no end. Hence me sitting here making this ranty little video today. I had planned for no video today, but I've reached a point in my brain where I can no longer sit through the same issue and think about the same problems without vocalizing them. Because I've been thinking these things for ages and they've just kind of reached fever pitch. I'm sure that so many of you out there so many of you who watch my channel have probably had experiences of wanting to jump into a multiplayer game on the quest with some friends and there being this 5, 10 or 15 minute long period of faffing around and not being able to get everyone into the same place at the same time to play that game. There's just still far too much reliance on outside external sources that don't exist within the VR headset. I'm always coming out of my headset to reach for this, my mobile phone, or I'm jumping out of the headset to log into Discord, to speak to people, to coordinate. We need to be moving towards a place where the Quest 2 is self-sufficient, and the people at Meta need to look to Steam and the friend, party, and invite systems that they have. They need to look towards PlayStation to look at the friend, party, and invite systems they have. And the same for Microsoft over at Xbox but they shouldn't be looking at Switch. They don't look at Nintendo. Nintendo's actually probably worse than the Quest 2 in terms of party invites and grouping people together. I hate the Switch for playing online, but the Quest 2 is arguably worse because it's uncomfortable. And if it's your first time playing VR and you're all excited and you wanna jump into a round of mini golf with some friends to test this headset out, and there's a five, 10 or 15 minute section of time, period of time where you're kind of lost, you're in there, you don't know how to group up, you don't know how to find your friends, you don't know how to navigate to the right menu to send a message that you can then immediately see on an overlay on top of the game. There's none of that. It's actually a really uncomfortable experience. If you're new to VR and you're trying to play a game with somebody else, it's painful and I do not blame people for experiencing that and then going, I'm not playing with that again. I'm not mucking around with that until they fix those issues. That needs to be much smoother, is the thought that I still walk away with. And I'm a VR veteran at this point. I've been using the tech for years, and it still bugs me, no end, that it's as bad as it is on the Quest 2. Now, don't get me wrong. This problem isn't exclusive to the Quest 2. It exists for PC VR users as well, but PC VR users have the fallback of already being connected to their PC. So within the headset, you have all the Steam features. They aren't as slick as using Steam flat screen for sure, but you do have the features. You will get pop-ups for Steam invites if your friends in VR are trying to get you into their game. You also have the added benefit of probably already being connected to Discord. You can jump in, you're probably already in a Discord call in your headset and you're hearing it and you're chatting to friends that you're trying to organize this game with. You don't have any of that on the Quest. It's an isolated infrastructure. It's an isolated environment. You've been removed from all this. You're removed from your phone. You're removed from Discord. You're removed from the real world around you. You're in a headset, you're isolated. So that headset needs to be able to facilitate everything if you wanna jump into a multiplayer game. Now, some games do it better than others. Some games are great and I feel like you can jump in and get going immediately, but too many have given me the experience of I do not know how to get you into this game with me. Where is the friends list? Where's the invite button? Can I create a room code? Do I even need to create a room code? Should I need to create a room code? Why can't I bring up a friends list? Click invite, bang, you're straight in. It just 
isn't good enough right now. Now I've got dozens of examples, dozens of stories of times where I've tried to play something with a group of people and it either hasn't worked or there has been that awkward period of time that kind of precedes the actual gaming that's just uncomfortable for everyone. Everyone stands around getting frustrated. The first example is me playing with two relative VR newcomers. Two people who do not use the medium as much as me. One person who had just got a Quest 2 brand new, he was using it for probably the first time, and we were trying to play Walkabout Mini Golf. I got into the game, I was in Walkabout Mini Golf, and I realized I hadn't got either of these guys on my friends list. So I needed to lift the headset up, come out, grab my phone into WhatsApp. Hey guys, uh, what's your Quest usernames? Uh, they sent it back. Oh, I think it's this, I think it's this. Okay, back into VR, open up my menu, the Quest 2 menu, which is getting worse as time goes on. It's more convoluted, there's layers and things are getting buried. There isn't a really clear social hub and that is a big problem. I tried to navigate to the section where you can add a friend. I couldn't for the life of me find out where to add a friend. I went into my social section, I could see my friends list, I could see who's online, but actually trying to just find an add friend button, that took me personally far longer than it should have done. And I use this tech all the damn time, but I get lost in these systems because they aren't intuitive enough. They don't feel natural, they don't feel easy to navigate. Eventually, I found the button to add friends, I added these guys, and then I needed to come out of VR again to go back to my phone to explain to them how to find my friend request to accept it. Once we'd done that, we were then trying to invite each other using in-game systems, invite friend, coming back out of VR. Did you get the thing I sent you? Oh, I don't know, I can't find it. Uh, let me send another one. It took probably 10 to 15 minutes to all get us into a game of Walkabout Mini Golf and start playing Mini Golf. Once we were in, we had the absolute best time because Walkabout Mini Golf is excellent it's absolutely excellent but the experience of getting ourselves into that position getting ourselves to that point was awkward and uncomfortable if you're the kind of person who likes things to just work and doesn't want the faff that's a really bad first impression you're immediately going to be like oh i don't want to do that again why am i needing to come out check my phone go back in nothing come out go on discord nothing why am i having to do that little dance just to get into a game but these awkward situations aren't just unique to new vr users I've encountered multiple situations, multiple occasions, where it's me and a group of content creators trying to record a new multiplayer game, and we bounce off of the systems for five, 10, 15 minutes, trying to get into the same game. There just aren't good enough systems for bringing up an overlay menu, seeing my friends, adding my friends, messaging, inviting and grouping up with friends whilst inside the headset. You shouldn't be taking off the headset to arrange these kinds of things. That's completely unintuitive. It's counterintuitive to the immersion of VR, to being in there and wanting it to all work within the confines of the headset. Because it's a lonely, isolating experience if you're in there and you don't know if your communications are landing with the people you're trying to communicate to. You don't know if those friend requests are zipping off and landing in the right place. You can't see that the friend requester invites are always coming through to you. I've had people tell me they've invited me to games before and nothing's come through to me. No pop-up, nothing. It's beyond frustrating. The fallback usually for the content creators I play with when we're trying to play multiplayer games is the fact that the game isn't currently online. It's not currently public. There aren't other people playing. So we usually try and fail to make a custom game for 10 minutes and then go, should we just join a public lobby? Because we're probably the only people playing and we'll all end up in the same place. And lo and behold, that usually works. But if the game was public, we would not have that joy. We would not have that option. This is a ranty video, and I've basically said all I wanted to say. I just wanted to come on here and say that the systems on the Quest 2 for social and multiplayer interaction are not good enough, and they need to rapidly improve sooner rather than later if we want VR to grow, and we want gamers in general, not just VR games, but gamers in general, gamers at large, to take the Quest and VR seriously as a platform that they can jump into and play just as smoothly as they can on Steam or on PlayStation or on Xbox. I can jump onto Steam and be playing a game with my friend within seconds. It really is seconds and it should be the same in VR. In a perfect world, you should be able to open up an overlay menu in the Quest with a clean friends list. A friends list that you can scroll down and navigate. 
that also has options to add, remove, message, and invite friends. You should be able to invite friends to your home environment and move from there from experience to experience to experience to experience. Or you should be able to invite friends from this overlay menu directly to the experience you're already playing. If I was in Walkabout Mini Golf, I should be able to open an overlay, see my entire friends list, and invite them from there to Walkabout Mini Golf. And if they're not already on my friends list, I should be able to click and add them to my friends list. Nice and simple. We also need some kind of party overlay that you can jump into and talk to people throughout the whole experience, whether you're in your home or they're in a game or you're both in the game together. The party system on the Quest 2 exists, but it's also still not good enough. It is not a good enough substitute for needing to organize things and getting into games together. It doesn't work well enough to facilitate those kind of things right now. If I worked at Meta, the social aspects of the Quest 2 would be where all my focus was right now. It would be laser focused on making that system and those systems as close to the slickness of Steam, PlayStation and Xbox as I physically could. Because right now, it is just not good enough. And it's frustrating that I, as somebody who plays VR weekly, maybe three, four times a week, is still getting annoyed by it when I play a new multiplayer game with friends. If it's annoying me, it's killing VR for newcomers. That's basically everything I wanted to say. So in true moist critical fashion, see you later.